everyone, Vivi here. So I just got back from Lukla today. I had an absolute nightmare time getting back to Kathmandu. I will be making a story time about that, so click here to watch that or just wait till the end of the video and I'll also put a link up. So before I return some of my higher gear, I thought I would go through everything. I'm washed, my clothes aren't, bad situation. Let's go through everything I packed and I'll talk about what I wish I did not bring and wish that I did bring. We'll start with some like random things. Drink bottle, there's so many places to refill your drink bottle. So I wouldn't bring like a second drink bottle at all. Mine's just 800 milliliters, it's totally fine, refill it heaps. I'm not too worried about water. I literally filled this up where cows were drinking out of. Like sometimes the water from streams is just diverted into a pipe and I would refill it with that. My guide Bimal had chlorine drops so he added that to the water for the first couple days but then after a while I just drank it straight and I was fine. But I'm crazy so make sure your guide has some sort of water purifier system or bring your own if you want. Just ask your travel company if you're going with one. Another important thing is Make sure it's easily drinkable. There's big ones with that you unscrew and drink out of. You can't really drink that while you're walking and often you're thirsty when you're going up a steep hill. So this one you can just pop open normally. You can just like pop open, drink on the go. I also got a carabiner, is that what this is called? And so I could just attach it to my bag. So then as I'm walking, just like grab it. Drink. You'll drink more water if it's easy to drink water, so choose a bottle that makes it the easiest. There's a lot of explanation about a drink bottle, but anyway. Sunscreen. I did not use sunscreen as much as I should have. I definitely got very sunburnt. This arm where I was holding my trekking pole is seven shades darker than my natural ivory white. Can't buy this shade of makeup kind of white. Towards the end of the trek, I started getting blisters on my arm. Really should have put sunscreen on. But I did put sunscreen on my face. I have a moisturizer that has sunscreen in it. Uh, my face is fine because I use this every day. But I also should have put it on my ears. I was wearing a cap a lot of the time, so my ears got really sunburned. It's obviously very sunny, it's very hot because the UV rays reflect off the mountains and the snow and it's just intense. Apparently the UV rays are more intense up there. I don't know. Insect repellent. I met someone who told me I should bring it and honestly I did not use it once. Multivitamins. Um, a lot of people bring tang to add to their water like a powdered cordial to make them drink it faster or something. I'm not sure. If you're gonna bring any sort of water flavoring I would just say bring multivitamins because then you're adding something to your system that's good as well as having flavored water. Just bought this one in Kathmandu. It has, I don't know, multivitamins. Pack of playing cards. Someone always has playing cards. It's still unopened because I didn't open it at all, so kind of wish I didn't bring that. Sunglasses, minor prescription sunglasses, but bring sunglasses anyway that cut out UV rays. Like I said before, UV rays are intense up there. I don't know, you'll get snow blind or something. Toilet paper. What a treat it is to have free toilet paper. I think I experienced that once in Namchi Bazaar. Don't worry about stocking up on toilet paper because it's around the same price everywhere you go. You can buy it at the lodges at the stores along the way. Maybe around $2, $2.50 for a roll, but it's really nothing. Buy one when you leave and then just buy new ones as you go. Earplugs, definitely bring. There was quite a few lodges that I was at where either the walls didn't go all the way to the roof so you could hear everything, or the walls were made out of thin cardboard where sometimes it was splits in the wood where I could literally see my neighbor and hear my neighbor. Obviously heard a lot of snoring, heard one couple in Namchi having a great time next to me. Thank God for my earplugs. Headlamp. Um, I brought this because I read online most of the toilets will be outside of the lodging and you need it to go to the toilet in the middle of the night. One place I stayed at in the whole 19 days had a toilet outside, but I'm still happy I used it because 
sometimes electricity isn't very reliable. Also just to read at night if you're lying in bed and the lights are just too far away. Happy I brought this, even though I didn't really use it for toilet adventures, but yeah. Speaking of books, I don't have one at the moment, but I went through about three or four books during the trek. 19 days by the way. I brought one book with me. Um, you can either find another traveler who's finished their book and you can exchange it with them. Or you could buy a book at Namchi. So this was kind of my purse along the road, like a dry sack. I would just put my phone and stuff in here. So I have passport, which you do need, by the way, for the um, passes. There's a few checkpoints along the way. Two needed my passport. If you have a guide, which you should have a guide, I'll make a video about that as well. Your guide will just take care of all of the entrances and the permits and everything. Uh, this is my, my money situation. Absolutely do not rely on card. That is the craziest thing ever. One guy went all the way up to Gokyu Lakes with a card and obviously the lodges were like, we can't accept your card. Go back to Namchi and get money out. Absolutely bring cash, bring more than you think you need. A little small purse for smaller notes. My itinerary, hand sanitizer. Um, I also have used it already, but I had a little container of soap sheets. I think I bought them at Kathmandu, the store in Australia. Perfume, which is hilarious because I used that once or twice maybe. You will smell. Don't even bring deodorant because you're not just stinking from your armpits. You just smell all over and there ain't nothing that can help you. Band-aids, quick at the ready. Matches and strepsils, which should be in the medical area, but everyone develops a cough when you get the, the air is not just thin, it's really, really dry. It's like an Arctic desert. So you will always have a cough. It's also really dusty along the track at the beginning. My bag also has a little pocket on the side. So I kept my lip balm in there. The wind and the sun are gonna do awful things to your lips. Medical stuff, oral rehydrating salts. So uh, I think they're called like hydrolyte, gastrolyte, that kind of thing. I definitely recommend bringing these. Again, it flavors your water if you're interested in that. It's really important to, to make sure you don't get dehydrated or heat stroke because the symptoms are quite similar to mountain sickness. So you wanna make sure that you're Definitely hydrated, definitely not suffering from heat stroke before you decide to call it quits, if that's how you're feeling. Make it a priority to be hydrated as fuck. I always have my little Ventolin puffer, because I'm asthmatic. Just ibuprofen, paracetamol. It's good to have just in case, especially if you know you have any joint or bone problems or something that might flare up. Zolamide, which is a medicine for mountain sickness. I met a girl at the hostel who just gave me hers. She didn't use it, I didn't use it, but it's good to have just in case. Ginger candies, in case I felt sick. I don't know what I was thinking. Didn't use them, shouldn't have brought them. Saccharomyces cerevisiae the best probiotic against traveler sickness. I took one of these every single day just because I was terrified of getting sick. Either it worked or I'm just really immune to everything, which I doubt. Vapor rub. I got this along the way, Bimel bought it for me. I had a cold. Likely you will get a cold. A lot of people had colds, especially if you're not coming from a cold environment. Imodium, just in case I got some sort of belly bug thing. I wanted to be able to keep going, so definitely grab some anti-diarrhea stuff, just in case. Iodine, I don't know why, just in case I hurt myself, which I didn't. Toiletries, this is just an empty bottle that I had of shampoo, I just filled it up with soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, hairbrush, facial scrub with an exfoliator pad. Your face gets covered in sweat, it's just nice to scrub it away, even if it's over a cold sink. I did not bring any shampoo. I was not planning on washing my hair because there's no way to dry it. The chances of getting sick from that worried me too much. I did get my hair washed in Nancy Bazaar. It cost about $8 for a wash and dry and it was fantastic. The woman said I had the dirtiest hair she's seen in a long time. She washed it three times. Shower wise, you're not gonna be showering much. When I started on this trip, I heard quite a few people say that. And I was like, I'm gonna shower all the time, I'm gonna be so clean. But it gets to a point where it's 
too fucking cold to take your clothes off. None of the showers are enclosed and nice and warm and can fill up with steam. It's, there's always a window open or it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling because the hot water is made from gas. So it needs to be ventilated, gas to come out. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. The floor is always concrete for some reason, so it's freezing. And then you've got to dry yourself really quickly. You know, you stink from all over, but it's also your clothes. And unless you can do laundry, you're just gonna stink regardless. Speaking of laundry, you can get laundry done at uh, Namchi Bazaar. Uh, you won't be doing laundry at your lodge. Like the water is freezing cold. You don't even want to touch it. And then you have to wait for it to dry. And is the sun out? Not likely. Things aren't going to dry very well unless you're really lucky with the weather and you get somewhere really early. So I have this towel. I love this towel and I love it for my trip around the world. But like I said, I didn't shower enough for me to use it enough to justify bringing it. I wish that I brought one of those small micro towels, even though they're terrible to dry yourself with. Also, I wish maybe that I had brought a small, maybe like this big microfiber towel just for like a quick sink shower. I had to use like the corner of this to wash my dirty legs after mud slips and such. This needs a wash and I kind of wish I didn't bring it. So this is a sleep sheet. I did not bring a sleeping bag. Someone told me that there would be blankets the whole way, which there were. If there's no blanket in your room, you can just ask the lodge owner for a blanket or two and they'll give you one. The sleep sheet is just a queen size sheet that I sewed together at home and added a zip. I used this because the blankets, I don't think they're all washed regularly. Because it's a queen, it means I can kind of stretch around in it and I can pull it up over the pillow. Actually bring a pillowcase as well if you want to, just to protect your head from that. Hat, like I said though, my ears got super sunburnt, so maybe a bucket hat would be better, or one of those really ugly ones that have those things that come around the side. You could bring one of those and look like an idiot, but up to you. Bring sandals, not flip-flops, because your feet will be cold, you'll be wearing socks or booties, and you're not gonna be able to even operate your flip-flops. The bathrooms may not be outside, but often they, they're not a flush toilet. So you use a bucket, like a scoop to flush the toilet, which means some people are idiots and they splash it everywhere all over the floor. And a squat toilet, yeah, there's water always on the floor. So definitely bring something to wear to the bathroom, especially in the middle of the night. You don't want your warm socks getting all wet and gross. And bring a dry sack for them in case they're wet. Actually, I added all my gross dirty socks into this later on because they smelled so bad. Speaking of socks, I'm not gonna open it because like I said, nothing is clean. I think I have about nine pairs of underwear, five pairs of socks. I thought I would be doing laundry along the way. So I do wish that I brought enough pairs of underwear for the whole trip, honestly, that would have been great. Here's a day bag. People with porters will just already have a day bag. And this one folds up to this big and it zips somehow. I'm not sure how. Rain wise, rained every single day. Sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot. It snowed up in Gorakshap. Make sure your bag has a rain cover. That was super important. Rain jacket wise, I used it a few times. So it just packs away like this. Bring a raincoat just in case. So I rented these waterproof pants because I expected more snow. Two problems. One, didn't try them on in the store and turns out they're a little bit too small for me. So I would take three steps and the fly would just open up to the amusement of every single local who went past. Apart from that, there was maybe one day that I wish that I had waterproof pants. If it's going to snow a lot, bring them. If you're super worried though, you can just come to Kathmandu and rent them. Winter stuff. Bought this jacket in Kathmandu. It was about $30. It's North Face, North Fake, but it's just like a polyester sort of warm jacket. Oh, I really liked it for sleeping in, to be honest, because it has this cute little hood that I could just zip around my body. It's kind of like a sleeping bag, actually. This is just like a light casual jacket. I wore this on the day out because it was the cleanest because I didn't wear it. Honestly, like I shouldn't have brought this booties. 
super happy with these booties. I just got these in Kathmandu for like $2 in Tamil. Just walk around, you'll see heaps of them. They were pretty sufficient for sleeping in, for walking around in, and I was relaxing. Beanie, my fleecy jumper. When we got to the last few stops, I wore this one and this one to bed. It was so cold. Scarf. So I had two pairs of gloves. Uh, these ones I would just track with when it was super windy, last few days, Arctic desert. But often when I have stopped somewhere, I would wear the sort of wintry ones. So these are waterproof gloves, um, but these are just nice to build a snowman with. Honestly, I, I didn't wear them so much, but I think if they were more accessible in my bag, I would have pulled them out during the day when it was very, very cold and windy. Now the clothes. Three sort of training bras, one pair of fleecy sort of tracksuit pants. These were great to sleep in when it got really cold. I think I tracked in them in the last two days towards base camp. Thermal pants, I just wore these as pajamas. Exercise style pants, which I actually really recommend because they're quick dry. I tracked probably in these the most. Um, these are like jeggings basically not the best for trekking but it's what i had it's like my trekking jungle pants so pants wise i would say just focus on exercise style pants that you know are going to dry nicely and just be comfortable to walk in shirt wise i brought a short sleeve i brought two thermal shirts this one I slept in. This thermal I did trek in two or three times, just towards the end of like around base camp area. Very light, long sleeve, which I was pretty happy with because it protected me from the sun. I would often like pull up the sleeves, which is why my tan is like kind of up to there. But this was really good to trek in. And another short sleeve t-shirt. Whether you have a day pack or you're carrying your bag, uh, the shoulder straps will rub. And so you just kind of want something that at least is going to protect that area. I rented these boots in Kathmandu. Yeah, these were great. I have no problems with them at all. Don't know anything about the brand. They were waterproof. They had really good tracks, which is super important because it's going to get muddy. It's going to get rainy. It's going to be very slippery. Okay, quickly, camera stuff. Obviously, I brought the camera that I'm filming with right now, which is a Canon G7X. Mark II. Um, I brought a GoPro as well. I thought I was gonna wear it on my head in the rain and I never did. Highly recommend bringing one of these. Every single lodge will charge you between maybe 100 and 400 rupees, which is a dollar and four dollars, to charge your one item. Whereas if you just bring this, I found one place that would charge this entire thing for four dollars. I charged my camera and phone every single day off this and I only had to charge it one time in Dingboche um, and now it's at two. This is a 20,000 watt, I don't know what it means, 20,000 signet. Yeah, I don't know, I bought it from JB Hi-Fi in Australia. This is just for my trip around the world as well, but I have this waterproof SD card case. From all the filming I did, on the entire track, it was about 50 gigabytes of footage and I had a 64 gigabyte card. Unless you're filming crazy like me, 64 will definitely do. I didn't need to use any of these. So this is like a universal charger. I will look up and insert down here what the what the power plug thing is. Some headphones and some spare batteries as well. My gimbal, but I only used it base camp and Nancy. I didn't bring these clothes on the track, so the bag would be a little bit smaller because I'd be wearing some of the clothes. So this is an 80 litre bag. I don't really think it matters what size bag you have because you can tighten all the straps and make it a bit smaller. Just as long as you have something that has like a support strap here and along your chest um, and it's adjustable, that's really all that matters. Are you going to carry your bag or are you going to get a porter? I have a lot of opinions on both. So I'll be making a separate video talking about pros and cons of each and how porters are treated. So altogether this was about 12 kilos. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Um, if it wasn't and you still have questions, just ask them in the comments and I'm happy to answer. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.